a lot. Thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Uh, thanks for all, uh, the organizers. So this is based uh, on joint work with Anja Sturm, uh, which, is based, which is based in Göttingen. Um, and so, uh, similar as Marcel, I'm going to talk about the contact process um, in a dynamical random environment. So according to time, we also change the connections. Um, so let me first give some introductions and motivations. So as you already hear, uh, heard quite often today, so the contact process is a model, or one application of this model is to model an infection in a spatially structured population. And the, uh, the structure is coming from an underlying growth, which we call G here. So what we are normally so what we are considering in this talk are normally something like the integer letters or a regular tree. So we are working on infinite graphs uh, and not finite graphs here. And what we add here is that also the graphs uh, evolve as time evolves. So here in this picture, for everybody who hasn't seen as much contact process, so here's the dynamics, kind of easy to show. So we have red and black dots, which are the vertices. Red dots are infected and Black dots are healthy, so uh, by a certain rate you can infect your neighbors, which are connected to you, um, which then change to being infected and they can recover by itself uh, and being healthy again. And we add this dynamic that from time to time uh, edge vanishes and reappears again. And in infinite graphs, uh, the first question or one of the first questions you can ask is, can this infection persists for all time, which is certainly not true in finite class since we have a Markov uh, model on a finite state space, it will, be, it will end up in its absorbing state. This is not, tr uh, not always true on infinite class. So first let us uh, maybe introduce a uh, slightly easier version, the contact process on the limited population. So let us consider a graph G, which is connected, transitive, and above the degree. And then the contact process uh, on top of a dynamic population is just this pair of processes CB, uh, which is a color process on the, power, uh, the product space of uh, the product of this power sets. So we call, so first we treat the, the background process, I call this the dynamical random environment. So we call an edge open at time t if it is contained in this process free t, and otherwise it's closed at time t. And we consider a dynamic where we update every edge independently by a rate double uh, by a rate vp, and we open it with rate vp and we close it with rate one, uh, vp multiplied by one minus p. Um, so we has the interpretation of the update speed. So saying we we uh, we update an edge after an exponential amount of time with the parameter v, and then we throw a coin with probability p if it is open or closed afterwards. Um, so the nice thing about this model is that we can uh, construct this via this graphic representation by this opening and closing maps, to, uh, and this determines the whole process. So if we now fix our initial configuration, we can throw with a song point process these events, opening and closing events, and then we have defined our um, edge process, which determines when the edge, edges are open or closed. Also know that we normally, in this talk, we assume stationarity, that we also start off with everything, uh, with every edge being open for probability p or closed with 1 minus p. All right, then uh, the second part is this contact process or infection process, which is defined on top of this process. Um, so we have this background process, which is in state P, and the infection process C has then trans uh, the following transitions. Every neighbor which has uh, an edge which is open and is, is infected can infect our vertex X with rate longer. So different to the normal contact process here, we don't consider every neighbor, only every neighbor which is open at time T. And of course, the uh, recovery rate is still one, and uh, it is independent of its neighbors. Uh, normally, we, so we call the uh, infection rate lambda here. Um, again, we have this nice graphic representation here um, that we throw um, recovery events uh, denoted by crosses and uh, infection errors denoted by these double-headed errors on top of this graphic representation. Um, so here, as an example, we have a nearest neighbor structure. 
Um, of course, we can also have a more difficult structure, but it's just a hassle to do a proper picture with that. Uh, the difference from the normal um, graphic representation or, uh, for the classical graph graphic representation is that we also add in these gray areas here. And in these areas, uh, the edges are blocked or, or closed. And so if an infection error lands in these closed um, regions, we just ignore it. And so again, by rolling out this random structure, we only have to specify the initial configuration. And so we define the process like this. All right, so just for, um, to make the notation clear, we uh, denote the survival probability by this feature. It depends on these three uh, um, parameters and the initial configurations. And then we can define a critical infection rate, since uh, also in this kind of structure, um, we are monotone in lambda. So we look for the smallest uh, lambda such that the uh, survival probability is bigger than zero. All right, so we are not the first one to consider such a model. So uh, as far as I know, the first one to consider exactly this model were Link and Remenick, and they showed uh, several aspects uh, of the phase diagram in this kind of thing. Um, first of all, for the model with a positive speed, they showed that there, for every speed there exists such a P0, such that um, the infection rate, so the critical infection rate is infinity for all p, which are smaller than this p0, which they dubbed the immunization phase. Meaning, if we choose p and we bad enough for our uh, infection, we end up with having such a phase where we can never survive, even through we are on an infinite graph. So we are kind of isolating the infection somewhere. But they also showed that there exists a p1 such that for all p bigger than p1, there exists a, um, a critical infection rate which is smaller than infinity. So we have two phases here basically uh, saying that if p is big enough, we have the opportunity to choose the infection rate big enough that we can survive. And here there is a phase where we cannot hope to have any um, chance of survival. The second thing which they studied were, uh, was the asymptotics of the cell uh, for the speed going to infinity and going to zero. So for the speed going to infinity, they f uh, found out that um, it converges to the critical value which you expect on the, uh, of the classical contact process on the graph, just rescaled with this parameter p. The idea of this whole thing is that you update so fast that, after, uh, that before every infection event hits, you have to throw a coin if your edge is open or closed because you already forgot uh, from the previous infection if it is open or closed because all, there was already an update in between. So this is the idea why you have this product here. For um, a one-dimensional uh, integer letters, they showed that you converge to what you would expect uh, to infinity for all p smaller than 1 because on, a, on set you never so the, the percolation model on set has no infinite connected component, meaning if you're in a static case, so no updates, then you can never survive because you're always contained in a finite graph, meaning at some point you will die out. Happens maybe exponentially late, but you will die out almost sure, uh, surely. So in this sense, we have a kind of interpolation between uh, a contact process uh, on Z with a lowered infection rate and a contact process on set in a random environment. All right, so just recently there have been some more uh, results from Hilario and et al, where, where they considered set D, and they could show that the, uh, another like heuristic uh, was true. On set D, you actually have percolation of your static uh, percolation model, and this is actually a new phase where you can show that the critical rate, uh, the supremum of the critical rate is bound, so you converge to a finite uh, critical rate as v tends to zero. Um, and they also showed that you converge to infinity here uh, if you're below the uh, critical rate. What is not known yet is if these two critical rates are different. So it could happen that they actually coincide, but I would think that not. But it is not shown yet. All right, so this is as far as literature goes. So what we are considering is that we want to look at 
a long range model. So similar as for here Hillary at all, normally in the long range percolation, you also have a phase where percolation occurs. So we thought this would be interesting. And so we switched to this one, uh, meaning that our contact process on a dynamical long range percolation is as follows. We just switch the, the edge set to all edges. So this set here. And okay, to, to get a well defined process, we need to adjust our uh, update rate somehow. So the update rate and uh, um, the open probabilities now depend on the edge which they happen. So we switch the, the rates to open and edge to VE and PE. And the same here. Also again, we uh, assume stationarity. But in a sense, we can construct the whole process in a similar fashion as before. But where I will not go into detail is uh, to show that it's actually a well-defined process takes some effort because for the dynamical percolation model you have naturally an upper bound which is the classical contact process if you would do the same here you would end up with the complete graph which is infinitely big so you would explode in no time but you can show that this actually yields a, a process which is well defined in the sense that you don't explode in finite time yeah, and so here, for everybody who hasn't seen a long range percolation before or is not so familiar, this is one, one example that you have edges which go really far uh, into the tails here. All right, so of course, uh, just this is the model, rather, rather general. Of course, we want to show some things. And similar as for the contact process on a dynamic percolation, we would like to have two parameters, which we call here gamma and q, which overall give you information about the update speed and uh, um, the update probability. So we assume that we have the following shape. We have a given sequence VE, um, which, go, uh, which is between 0 and infinity, and this is multiplied with some parameter gamma. And the same here with uh, this P hat is just the product of Q and PE, where P is a sequence in 0, 1. Uh, and the first thing which we assume is that we are a translation invariant. So, so here's the only part where actually the original graph structure comes in. So this, this D is the original uh, graph distance, saying that in the original graph distance, if we have two edges which are of the same length, then they have the same update speed and update uh, probability. So in, L, uh, so in Z, this would be L1. So if they have the same distance, um, no matter where I put this edge, I have the same update uh, rates. All right, and to end up in a well with a well-defined process, we have these two somewhat yeah, technical uh, assumptions. So the first assumption might be somewhat clear. This just means that we have a summability condition on the, the flip rate to being open. Um, so we, yeah, and so and we don't have too many open edges. And in this sense, we at any t we have finitely many open edges uh, at one vertex, so we cannot explode. And the second one is this inverse of um, the update speed should be uh, summable. So this means that our update speed goes to infinity as the edge scale is, lo uh, is longer. And this might be somewhat, yeah, a bit, it's a technical assumption. And it's a bit not so natural to assume, I guess. But this means that my, uh, my vertex, so if I look at the vertex, uh, every Edge attached to this vertex will update in a finite time, and we have infinitely many. But this uh, is basically the so um, basically the mean update time of one edge, and I just sum them up, so I will end up with a so I can actually refresh and vertex in a finite time. All right. So again, uh, a reminder here: uh, survival probability is still a theta, uh, critical rate is still a lambda c. We just uh, changed the um, the parameters gamma and q, uh, which was before v and p. So I will also refer to q as the update speed and to q uh, uh, to to gamma as the update speed and to q as the open probability. So so the main results we uh, considered were first we want to kind of compare this dynamical model to um, to something more easy, it's still a rather difficult process, but we want to get rid of the dynamics in the background, so we I compared this to a contact process with a general infection kernel. So this means that we have a classical contact process, just that uh, the infection rate between 
uh, vertices depends on the uh, so on the distance of them. So every uh, infection rate a x y is um, is now dependent on the vertices, and it's summable so that we end up with a well-defined process. Um, yeah, and so a direct application of some results of Broman gave us a, co a comparison with our um, contact process uh, in a dynamical long-range percolation, meaning that we can couple the uh, this um, contact process in a dynamical long-range percolation with a contact process with the following infection kernel, not particularly nice, but uh, an explicit form, uh, in such a way that the um, contact process with the infection kernel is always contained in our infection process, meaning we have an upper bound for the critical rate. Here, um, yeah, this depends on gamma and q. One nice thing about this A upper bar is that we can actually, um, we end up with a nice limit if we let uh, gamma tend to infinity. And this, uh, this, this is exactly this limit here. So it gets much more easier. So we end up with lambda Q multiplied with P, uh, PE. And a corollary of this is that we actually, if we consider a contact process with an infection kernel as such, um, the limb sub of our original contact pro um, uh, original critical value is bound from above by this. So this is a partial result for the fast speed case where we uh, as similar as for the contact cross and dynamic population. Uh, the proof sketch as uh, so the proof is rather easy. It's just some analytical calculations. So we already know that we have by this coupling that we have this um, um, order here. So um, we know that it suffices to show that this the limb sub of the uh, of this lambda c upper bar converges to lambda c infinity, and it yeah from some analytical calculations you can show that actually you can find lower and upper bounds for the for the rates uh, a upper bar, which are of these uh, of these forms, and this um, yeah constant here is actually. Uh, the supremum of this constant converges to one, so you will end up from you have a, a bound from below and above, which you, forces you to go to this uh, infection rate here. All right. So um, the interesting point is now also in this kind of model we were able to to show and it's kind of like a generalization of the results from Linka and Remenek uh, that we have an immunization phase, um, meaning that we find uh, a Q0, such that C, this infection process always dies out. Yeah, meaning that uh, uh, for all yeah, Q uh, lower than Q0, which depends on gamma, this is infinity. And uh, as a corollary, then on, on arbitrary graphs, we can at least partially describe the um, the behavior of a slow speed as like gamma goes to zero, we find a Q1, which is basically the maximum of these Q zeros, such that um, we, um, the infection, the, the critical infection rate tends to infinity. So basically, similar as before, we have now a phase diagram found like this Q0, and we know that this, uh, there exists a Q1. They might be the same, but you don't know. But here again, we have this uh, ionization phase. So that we can, uh, if we let V tend, or gamma tend to infinity, then we end up in, uh, with no survival possible. So this can be made a bit more precise if we reduce uh, to a special case uh, Z with nearest neighbor structure, and the nearest neighbor structure is only because of this like, introducing translation invariance, so it doesn't really play a role here. Um, then again, uh, similar as before, if we sharpen a bit our assumption on the rate, we can show for every Q smaller than one um, that this critical infection rate converts to infinity. And here we added basically a weight, in which is the length of the, of the edge. And if this is, uh, these two are finite, then we can generalize the, um, the proof of Link and Remenick to show that also in this model, we, uh, this converts to infinity and we will have um, extinction 
as in the so asymptotically extinction as in um, as you would expect in a static case, which I will later on uh, go into, t into detail. So now uh, in the remaining in the remaining time, I would like to go a bit more into the details of the proofs of the last two results, so the ionization and the, um, yeah and the slow speed. And the idea is now that we like blockwise compare this uh, dynamical long-range percolation with a long-range percolation model. Uh, this is meant in the following way that we define this um, such uh, indicator functions if an edge is blocked for a whole time period of length t and yeah, then, then it is 1, and uh, if it is not, then uh, it's 0. As in the pictures here, so we divide basically our time scale here into an equidistant uh, cover, and if the whole, if the whole edge, is, uh, if the if the edge is blocked for the whole time period, then we keep it like this. If it is not blocked for the whole time period, then we leave it open. Like this, we only allow more infection errors, and it's yeah, it only gets easier to survive. So we have a basically an upper bound in a sense, or a, a process which survives easier. The the good thing about this thing is that if we consider different edges, because we have dynamic population we update independently, these random variables are independent if we are on different edges. The bad thing is if we are not on different edges, time-wise they are not independent, because yeah, if we know that an edge was closed for the whole time period here, it might be more likely for it be being closed in the whole time period here as our way around. So there is some dependency between uh, these events. So there, um, Lincoln Remenick already ha had a bound on this um, conditional probability here. And of course, in our case, this now gets a bit more messy since it depends on the edge. Additionally, to be, um, so these parameters uh, vary for, uh, for every edge. Uh, but still, we have this kind of shape here. Also, again, not really particularly nice, but still some properties we can uh, can work with. Um, so we define this for short uh, for this delta e, which depends on gamma, q, and t. And my like, two um, two things which are nice here is that if gamma is given, we can choose q, q and t is small enough that it's close to one, and um, if we choose the time, the time frame proportional to the, the update rate, which is, might not so be, uh, be not so surprising, then it actually gets independent of the update speed, since we adjust the length of the time period according to the update. So it only depends on Q in this case. So, I mean, later in the, in the proofs I will point towards this where this comes in, but I mean, now I just want to point this out that it's not particularly nice to look at this formula, but there are some properties which are useful for, uh, for later. Um, so what we can now do is maybe use some, one can say that we use some, uh, some well-known facts, but it's not so easy to show actually. So we can couple these uh, Bernoulli random variables, where, which were now uh, dependent in time, to independent uh, random variables, which have probability delta e. Um, such that they are uh, almost surely ordered. So, yeah. And like this, we can define a new, pro uh, a new infection process, C tilde, um, by saying an infection error doesn't need to satisfy only being open, but um, must satisfy this. So it's open according to this W prime. So if we go back to the picture, for example, this would be one infection error we, which we added now. All right. And like this, I guess by, by the picture it's clear that C tilde, if this goes extinct, then also C goes extinct. And this was the whole idea. All right. So first uh, we go to the ionization phase. So the idea is basically if these W and prime um, are one for all y, then all edges attached to x are closed, as in this picture. So you're isolated. If then a recovery event hits you, 
even if there are infection errors, you don't have any chance to, to spread, and this is a dead end for you. So here, an infection will die. And the idea is that this happens quite often if Q is small. All right. Um, and so the idea is uh, to define the type of oriented percolation as a comparison tool. Um, and saying, like, we define this x as uh, 1 minus w n prime. So if this is 1, this means um, the edge was open. If the edge is open, we just treat it as that if there was a uh, if there was an infection. Really crude upper bound, but an upper bound. Um, Uxn means there is no infection. Uh, there is no recovery event on the whole timeline. Yeah. So we said at one, if there is no uh, inf uh, no recovery and zero otherwise. Meaning if uh, Uxn is zero and the sum of these um, x variables is zero, then we are exactly in this situation that we are isolated and we get hit, hit by a recovery event, meaning we know that at time n plus 1t we will not be infected. So x will not be infected. Um, all right, so the good thing about these random variables are, is they are independent, and like this we can define an oriented percolation type of. So a, a kind of uh, oriented percolation model. So we define this uh, such a random graph G1, and um, we add edges as, as follows. So if uxm is 1, then we have no recovery symbol on this, uh, on this timeline, so we add an arrow pointing upwards. So a potential infection could tra travel along this line. If x is 1, then we know that the, um, the edge is open for the whole time period. Then we just treat as if there was an infection, and we cannot judge if, if on some of the uh, vertices it died out. So we just add an arrow pointing upwards on both of the vertices. Um, then we define um, like this. We can define a, a graph also according to some graphical representation. We, we build up the whole graph and define a process y n, which is the set of all uh, points x. Um, such that it's connected to y0, which is the initial, configura uh, the initial infected uh, initial infections, and, and between xn, so time n. So in this picture, so this is one possible realization. If we start with this infected, one possible uh, open path would be this. And like this, this is basically kind of like a, a Golden Watson tree with a, with a bit. Uh, yeah, with dependencies, because you can have these collision events. But in a similar fashion, uh, one can show that if the expected degree, so if this expected value of um, y1, so that the commonality of y1 is um, smaller than 1, then you are subcritical and you go extinct. And like this, we reduce our, uh, basically our problem to saying is the expected size of a connected component of a long range percolation what, what y1 basically is. So we only take one time step and lay out edges. So we basically uh, end up with a long range percolation, then um, with, this open, uh, with this probability of being open. And this is something we can control. So for this, uh, there, there has been some work done, and we can choose gamma and if for a fixed gamma, we can choose q and t small enough, such that actually this gets smaller than 1. So uh, in, in essence, we reduce uh, the whole problem down to uh, saying, is the expected size of the connected component uh, of a long-range percolation smaller than 1? All right. And then uh, this shows uh, that um, this y goes extinct. And if this y goes extinct, one can show that this already implies uh, extinction of c because we have built this on top of the c tilde, and so we have a, a chain basically of saying that c is part of c tilde and c tilde is part of y, at least at these um, times tn. And if we, of course, if we have extinction at one time point, then the whole process is extinct for all time. So, so this was the immunization phase. 
Um, yeah, I'm actually. How long do you still have left? Uh, so five two. Okay. So, uh, All right. Thirty minutes. Should be enough. <laughs> so then, the uh, next thing is about the proof strategy for the slow uh, speed regime. So now, maybe coming back to the heuristics, why do we need this uh, new assumptions here? So as mentioned before, we add them to the assumptions we had before. Uh, the scaling with y uh, here and here. And the idea is that, of course, for every time t, we are stationary, so every time t we have a long-range percolation. So the idea is that if, we, if our long-range percolation does not form an infinite cluster, then we would think that um, if this is stable enough, we are contained in this infinite cluster, and then we die out in this infinite cluster, in this finite cluster since we are contained in a finite graph. And this is exactly on Z, the case if so, such, uh, such cut points exist, which, is, um, which can be shown that uh, by this assumption is induced. Such a cut point means that between a pair of vertices, we find no edge which goes above this, um, these, um, two vert so this connection of these two vertices. So basically, there's a no flight zone, so you can't cross here. So there's no possibility to come from here to here. And then, by an uh, by ergodicity theory, you can show that these cut points happen infinitely often in Z. And so you will always find a cut point, and then you will always have a finite connected uh, component for every fixed time t. Of course, it's a bit more difficult in the sense because we are now varying in the random environment, so we can break these cut points. So the idea is that for really small speed, such uh, cut points should remain for a long time because we don't update much. Um, again, we want to use this to construct blocks, which are now our connected components, um, and use, again, an oriented percolation type of model to, as a comparison. So the idea is here in this picture that we remain for a long time uh, isolated in this one phase and so that we can die out in, in this, so the infection in this uh, isolated uh, con um, component dies out. So the difficulty here now is that the cut points are actually positively correlated, meaning if we have a cut point here, of course the probability of here being a cut point is much higher than for some other uh, um, vertex pair because here we already know that no edge is coming from the left. And so what we do now is that we already know that long edges doesn't make, don't make a difference to, uh, in this kind of model, or the heuristic says that the long range, uh, edges don't make too much of a difference because they don't introduce connected components. So we distinguish between short and long edges and, and what comes. Saying we define an edge as short if it's smaller than 2k0, uh, so a, a constant which we set and we choose later on, but these are short edges and everything which is in the, when the edge is longer than 2k0, then we say it's a long edge. And these happen with low probability. Then we define this nk0 cuts, which are only taking short edges into account, meaning that if no edge goes over this pair of xy, then we call m in and cut point. So at M there are no edges crossing over. All right. But only short edges. There could have a, there could be now a long edge which crosses over. So to make these cut points now independent, we only allow cut, we only count cut points which are far enough apart. So we, we choose a cover MK, so this, uh, this joint cover um, which covers whole Z. And we again distinguish here between two, between three sets. Here we have mk left, right, and mid. So these two boundary sets we choose of length k zero, and this uh, middle set we choose of length r zero, meaning that a cut point in this mi middle set and a cut point in this middle set are apart by two k zero, meaning there are no, there are only long edges which could connect them. 
So in a sense, now these cut points, so these cut points are now independent because the, they only use short edges. All right. And by this, we we want to define such a covering of time and space. Um, so saying we we take the um, if there is no cut point, we define this uh, variable x k n as the indicator for a function that there is no, there's no cut point in the n k mid, and um, we define such boxes x k n of length. So the time length is still of length t from n t to n plus one t, and we define the right and left boundaries of these boxes as the left leftmost n cut point in mk middle. So here, for example, we have two cut points, these uh, black lines. We take the leftmost as the boundary. And then, in a similar way, we take the leftmost in, in another middle. If we don't find a cut point, we just take the rightmost here. So we need to control somehow how big our boxes will be, and this is why we introduce this um, artificial rule of having uh, a boundary here if there is no cut point. All right, so like this, we define um, uh, this joint covering by this uh, SKN. So this is random, but we have a cover of the whole time time space um, set cr um, cross or cross. And now we define again an infection and. Uh, infection rule and um, um, recovery rule. So basically, we define this uh, WKLN, where uh, WKLN is uh, the, the connection between blocks. So if you have two blocks and there is a long edge connecting these two blocks, then we say they are connected. And then we set this to one. So if there is a uh, an edge open between these two blocks, we say the infection travels between these two blocks. We don't care if there's an infection, we just say it uh, travels and both blocks are infected. Um, if there exists an infection path so, uh, in the box, which goes from some point x to uh, another point y from through the whole time period, then we also say the infection survives through this box. No matter if this infection, uh, there was an infection previously, but uh, okay, if there was an infection in the box, it doesn't have to be X, but if there was somewhere in the box an infection, we say it survived, since we assume at some point it has crossed this path and traveled through the box. All right, like this, we now again can um, choose uh, yeah, the most unfavorable setting. Um, maybe one thing which I forgot to say by, by this uh, covering, so between two boxes, the, the intersection to, uh, of two boxes can be at most three boxes in the next stage. They are chosen like this, that no matter what, at most three of, uh, of the boxes have an overlap or, or hit the boundary of this box. So being like worst case here, saying, okay, if, um, if in box K the infection can survive, then it could in fact, uh, the upper three boxes. If we have no, if the boundary uh, is not created by a cut point, then we say between two neighboring boxes, the infection can travel and both boxes are infected. So we infect all uh, these four boxes. If there is a long edge, then we do the same thing. We, uh, we say that it can infection travel along this edge, which keeps them in both uh, boxes and it, <coughs> Um, it pushes it to the next generation in, in, in all three boxes. And like this, we can again construct this uh, graph. Um, yeah, and this is a possible open path where we travel along a vertical and a horizontal edges. And again, define such a process set N, which uh, now depends on UX, W, uh, and W as the rules di dictate before. So we, uh, we uh, take every point into account that, such that uh, there exists an open path from our initial um, infected boxes set zero, set zero to a box with label X uh, at time n. And then one can show that the extinction of, such a, of this process 
um, implies extinction of Z because we always chose the most favorable setting for the infection. So uh, this new process makes it much easier for the infection to survive as the original process. And so, if even with these favorable conditions, this uh, infection dies out, then of course, in the original process, it also dies out. So there is now added one additional uh, uh, problem here. And so we end, did end up with our intercalation model or type of model yet, because we have we lack independence between U and W, since both of these uh, random variables depend on this random covering of time and space. They are only conditional independent of uh, when we know the, um, these, this, this joint covering. But, yeah, again, um, the solution to this problem is that we want to find some dominating independent families, U prime and W prime. It's a bit, yeah, technical to, to find them and to prove that, as a, to, to find them is uh, not so difficult, but to prove that they actually dominate them and that we can couple them is, uh, is a bit technical, so I will, will spare you here of the details, but uh, it's possible to construct these, uh, um, to construct such independent families. And like this, uh, since we, since they dominate this, we can apply this as so defined by the same rules. Just now we use these uh, random variables u prime and w prime, and again construct a, uh, a process set n prime. And again, we have now a type of, yeah, uh, a type of branching like process where we can determine if it's supercritical or uh, subcritical again by knowing its uh, expecta uh, expe expectation of the offspring distribution. Meaning if this is smaller than one, then Z prime dies out almost surely. And yeah, this is again uh, a type of uh, connected component, uh, so the size of the connected component of the long range percolation. And now here we need to fix the infection rate lambda and Q. And then we can choose the speed r0 and k, k0 in such a way that this is smaller than one. And yeah, like this, we can again show that this uh, in this setting we are smaller than one for this uh, expectation value, which implies extinction. Um, yeah, maybe one difference here is that this actually depends on the infection rate lambda. So before we had this immunization phase where this was independent of lambda, so for every lambda we would die out. Here this actually depends on lambda, so we could actually survive for a higher lambda. Yeah. So now this is basically the end of my um, of the technical details, and so I want to finish with some uh, with a summary and some conjectures. So what have we seen so far? So we treated first of all we have the survival criteria by a comparison with a contact process with a general infection kernel. Uh, so these models are surely not easy to calculate, but they might be a bit easier than having also this long-range dynamical percolation in the background. So in a sense, uh, you can at least show somewhat easier if there is a phase transition or not. Um, so for the fast speed, we have now this upper bound of this crit for the critical value. Um, and of course, uh, an explicit limit would be nice to have here and yeah one would actually expect by the same logic as in the for the boundary degree case which uh, Link and Remnick showed that this should be the same but it's much more difficult here because we have to consider much more infinitely many edges for every vertex so a lot of the techniques break down here and I'm not sure how, how to save them <laughs> so we also found our immunization phase similar as in the previous model, and for slow speed, we found this Q, Q1, um, such that we converge to infinity, and on, the, on Z, we made this a bit sharper with the additional assumptions here that we always converge uh, except for equal one, because if we set it to equal one, then there might be some edges which are always there. All right, so, I would say we should expect a similar behavior of the, the phase diagram that we end up with these two, uh, three phases. So having an immunization phase, having a phase where we converge to uh, infinity but always have a chance of survival. And uh, if in, in the model, um, so if in the, 
if in the background there exists an infinite connected component, I would say that there, this would also converge to something finite here. And so the conjecture is, as previously stated, that the limit here should be the same. That so one further question is: uh, is Q, when is Q zero actually smaller than one, so that we have such a phase? And also, when is so is Q one bigger than Q zero? So does this phase actually exist in this model, which is also not clear on ZD, for example, for dynamic dynamic population? And um, yeah. One of the interesting things, which I actually kind of started off with uh, thinking that one can might show this, is what happens if we have an infi infinite connected component in the long-range population model. Then you would uh, expect that there, that the critical weight should be bounded. But here we haven't found a handle yet to tackle this problem because different as in the, yeah, so at least on Z, different as in the normal percolation model, you cannot really restrict yourself to finite blocks because now the long edges actually kick in to form them, uh, to make a difference. So building this finite block construction now uh, kind of seems difficult. Maybe on high graphs like set two or set B, this is possible since there is this, like, um, yeah, there, there is more going on there, but on Z, this seems a bit difficult, but also interesting. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for your attention. Um, so there's still a work in progress, but soon should be on archive, so thanks a lot for listening.